Hallelujah. Can we stand to our feet and begin to bless his name? Listen, I, I believe. I believe one of the reasons why many people don't get anything out of corporate worship is because we always come to receive. And many times we don't know as my wife declared that he's already done enough. So if we can signify not with the clapping of your hands but with the fruit of your lips, begin to give God something corporately. Come on, begin to bless his name. Father, you are worthy and worthy to be praised. Come on, open up your mouth with the fruit of your lips. Let's begin to bless his name. Because I begin, believe if we begin to bless him, everything we need, God will begin to do. Come on and bless his name. God, you are worthy and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, God. We declare hallelujah unto your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now seal that with a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. I want you to go quickly to the text. I want us to go to 1 Kings chapter 17. I'm so grateful that my family um, drove from far and near to be here. Can y'all say hey to my family? They, up, they over there in that corner. Hey man, so good to, that they could worship with us. Hey, hey y'all, and I know I, I love protocol, but it's my grandma's birthday tomorrow. So y'all say happy birthday. First Kings chapter 17. Hey, Mr. Jeffrey, you've been on my heart. It's so good to see you in worship this morning. So good to see you, Valerie. I love you dearly. First Kings chapter 17. I want us to look at verses number 8 through 10b. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If you don't have it, it's on the screens for your hearing. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise and go to Zarephath which belongs to Saddam, and dwell there and see I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called her. The Bible says in verse 10, so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to minister from this subject this morning. I, I've been on this theme called, he remembered her. The Lord remembered her. So we're in women's month, so I want to remain in that vein. But I want to um, minister from this subject that he remembers sacrificial women. He remembers sacrificial women. Somebody say he remembers sacrificial women. Thank you, Cartes. I believe one of the greatest blessings that women have been given is their ability to bear. Their ability to bear. Somebody may be saying, what do you mean, Pastor Keith? Women have been given this ability to bear life. Somebody say children. Yeah. Women have been um, given this ability to bear lineages. Somebody say generations. Yeah. And women have even been given this ability to bear legacies. Somebody say families. Uh, we've been women have been given this great burden and I believe it's one of the greatest burdens my wife um, 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 blessings one of the things my wife says that I wish that men could bear children just for a little bit somebody say the devil is a lie no 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 that that the women have been given that ability to bear life to bear lineages and to bear legacies but watch this although these may be great blessings they can also serve as great burdens somebody say burdens because many times the ability for a woman, a woman to bear a life, a lineage, and a legacy, it requires great sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. And many times, y'all know we got women in our lives, we don't realize the sacrifices that they make for our lives. Many times women had to sacrifice their dreams to bear children. Many times women had to sacrifice their desires to bear generations. And many times women had to sacrifice, watch this, literal dollars to bear legacies. 
And while these sacrifices, watch this, produce great blessings, the reality is many women have seasons of both regret and remorse when others reap as a result of what they seemingly lost. I don't know about y'all, but I know you love your babies, but sometimes it seems like you lost out on some stuff because you may have had babies too young. Y'all, y'all stand with me. So women go through seasons of regret and remorse when it seems like I've sacrificed for another, but I don't reap the benefits of these blessings. Somebody say sacrifices. Uh, these sacrifices that women endure. And even more, watch this, there comes a point in your journey where you feel as if you reach your capacity to carry. I don't know about no other woman. I ain't, I ain't never been a woman, but I've been, I married the one. Watch this. You get to a place where you feel like I've reached the point where I can't carry anymore. I don't know if anybody, if any woman in this place feel that way, somebody say amen. amen. In other words, we bear so much for others that we burn out. Oh, that, that, that's women, y'all. That's women, y'all. Men, we, we need to have a level of understanding of that because continual sacrifice, watch this, can cause you to become weary. So there comes a time when women carry the weight of others where they need somebody to carry them. You can carry the weight of other folk when you need somebody to care for you. And you can carry the weight of other folk when you need somebody to comfort you. Somebody may be saying, I, I get all of that, Pastor Keith, but why is this significant? Because as I, I noted earlier, sacrifice strips you of your strength. And watch this, this is always the place where Satan steps in. When I'm weary, that's when Satan knows how to step in. And many times we watch women carry weight so well that we did not realize that they were weary. And many times the enemy slips in and watches men that he'll slip in right, right through us to get the men, to get the women that have been bearing the weight um, that caused them, somebody say, to be weary, to be weary, to be weary. So here's a word of wisdom. I believe some women are so good at masking when they're weary. Y'all heard what I just said? Because God has gifted you to bear, it can make others blind to the sacrifices if they're not discerning. Listen, y'all don't get mad at the men. Y'all do it so well that we can be blind to your sacrifices if we're not discerning. Uh, so, so I need y'all to catch something in, in, um, what I'm trying to tell you so that means don't get mad at your spouse when they don't help you as you sacrifice I'm talking to the women don't get mad at your siblings when they don't help you when you sacrifice and watch this don't even get mad at the seeds you birth when they don't help you when you sacrifice women tell somebody when you're tired did y'all catch what I just said I, I, because you wear it so well because you carry this weight watch this because God has graced you to bear some things sometimes when we're not in your shoes we're not as discerning that you become weary somebody say I got to tell somebody somebody say open up my mouth uh, you got to open up your mouth because Galatians 6 and 2 reminds us to carry one another's burdens but we can't help you carry what you fail to confess and many times you're carrying stuff, you've reached your capacity, but nobody knows because you failed to confess. This is why you need a good uh, girlfriend in your life. Somebody say, I need a good girlfriend in my life. Because sometimes when they got the strength they need, you need to be able to confess that you don't have strength so they can make intercession for you. Somebody say, open up my mouth. I've got to open up my mouth. The enemy wants you to remain weary. But here's the good news. The Lord remembers the weary. Notice what the, um, Jesus says in Matthew 9, 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary. He remembers those who feel as if they've carried beyond their capacity. That's good news to me, y'all. I don't know about you, but there's seasons where I just get so tired and I, I have to remind myself that the Lord remembers me. Even when people... Stop, watch this, and folk will not stop bringing stuff to you in seasons of weariness. But the good news is that God remembers. Even when folk will pile stuff up on you, God says, I remember those that are weary. In other words, he remembers sacrificial women. 
All of us are here today because of the sacrifice of some woman in our lives. But even more, I, 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 it's good that you can stand on the feet or the backs of another woman. But the good news for women is that the Lord remembers you. I want to encourage some woman today that when you feel void of strength, that your sacrifices are not in vain. And notice what Paul reminds believers in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. The Bible says this, and I, I, I want to encourage some woman that may feel like giving up. The Bible says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. In other words, you might be weary, your sacrifices have still been seen by God. Did y'all catch, catch what I just said? Even though you might be weary, God sees your sacrifices. That's good news, and yet if we can be honest, it's not just the lack of rest from sacrificing that makes us tired, it's the lack of seeing a reward. Y'all right. know that? It's not, you know, when, I've, when I give to folk, when I sacrifice my life, it's not that I'm just running around like a chicken with my head cut off, but it's when I don't receive the reward that I thought I deserved. Woo. I don't know about y'all, but that makes me, somebody say, tired. God, when am I going to receive my reward? Because you can get tired helping people when help fails to find you. And I believe this is where we find this woman in our text struggling to see the fruit of her sacrifices and believing that she had carried beyond her capacity. And this is why the prophet even tells us this in verse number 12 of our foundational text. She says, I don't have bread, only a handful full of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I might go in and prepare for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Because watch this. If we can be honest, it's hard to remain faithful when you fail to see the fruit of your sacrifice. I, 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 I don't want to believe that this was just a one-day occurrence with this woman. I, I don't even want to believe that it was a couple of weeks, but I believe, watch this, that she had sacrificed years for her son. She had been faithful with her sacrifices, and she failed to see the fruit. And I don't know about nobody else, but that can make you, somebody say, tired. tired. That I done helped folk, and I don't see my reward. That I, that I done um, served folk, and I still have yet to see my reward. Yet watch this, despite what she declared with her mouth, she was still on the mind of God. That I don't know if y'all heard me, but listen, despite the fact that she said she's going to feed her and her son and die, she was still on the mind of God. So here's something that ain't in my notes. It's okay to get frustrated when you sacrifice and you fail to see the fruit. You're still on the mind of God. Woo! That's good news that God allows me to be frustrated, but I can still remain on his mind. This woman was on the mind of God. And watch this. He remembered her. And I believe we too can be remembered by God even when we help people and we fail to be held back. Oh, that's good news to me, y'all. So the critical questions then we must ask ourselves is, how does the Lord remember sacrificial women? How do we recognize that the Lord has remembered us. Because listen, I don't want to be doing all this sacrificing that God don't remember me. I believe we can glean wisdom from this encounter with the prophet Elijah and this widow in our text. My prayer this morning, that our women are reminded that God blesses those that bear. Somebody say sacrifice. And as just as God blessed this widow in our text, I believe we too can be this, uh, receive this portion um, if we sacrifice, especially women. So let's examine our text, and I'm going to be out y'all way, because I know y'all got things to do, things to do. Hey, let's look at verse number 8 through 9. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a window, widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. I know that the text says this, but I need us to know that the widow was not there for Elijah, but Elijah was there for the widow. I, I need y'all to catch that. Because many times y'all think y'all helping folk and really folk try, God is trying to use folk to help you. How do I know that the Elijah was there for the widow and not the other way around? Because throughout the Bible, God always makes provision for the widow and never the widow for God. This is why, watch this, the beginning portion of the New American Standard Version. Go to the next slide for me. Psalm 146.9 says, The Lord watches over strangers. 
He supports the fatherless and the widow. Somebody say the widow. God, God takes care of the widow. This means there are times when you think you may be helping someone and God is really trying to help you. Uh, even more, when you are weary from your sacrifices, it is God himself. Watch this, that sends your help. So here's the thing that we have to remember. When we sacrifice um, for the work of God and for others, and we know God is leading us to sacrifice, here's the good news. God commands your help. Now that's good news to me. Somebody say he commands my help. He, he commands my help. Consider what the Lord told the prophet Elijah in our foundational text. He says in verse number nine, arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. This is the place where this widow lived and the Lord was sending her help. Uh, in, in other words, watch this, your help may not be here now, but your help, watch this, for sacrificial women is on the way. I've got to remind myself when I get weary in this journey where I've been laboring for folk and folk won't labor for me, that my help is on the way. And watch this, y'all got to make sure you sacrifice for, for folk that God told you to sacrifice for. Because God will never send, watch this, command your help when you're helping folk that God ain't never called you to help. See, y'all done y'all helping folk watch this that are ungrateful. You helping folk that God ain't got that's trying to teach a lesson in their lives, and you keep giving them money, and God is trying to teach them to be a good steward. Somebody say, God ain't never sent me there. Amen. So if I want my sacrifice to be remembered by God, I gotta make sure that I help folk that God tell me to help. Watch this, I'm gonna help y'all out real quick. Stop giving y'all money to churches that God ain't never tell you to give your money to. That's why you never see the fruit. Oh, y'all got to stay with me. If I want God to honor my sacrifice, I've got to sacrifice according to where he sends me. Because watch this. Ooh, now, this is good news. If God is sending me over there, that's he knows where he needs to send my help. And many of y'all, watch this, are out of position. Oh, see, y'all don't like that. Helping folk that God ain't never tell you to help. And you wonder why you ain't seeing no fruit. Watch this. Notice what the psalmist declared in Psalm 121, verses 1 through 2a. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help, somebody say, comes from the Lord. Oh, it comes from the Lord. Listen, I ain't looking for nowhere else but from God for my help. And the problem with many believers is you looking in all the wrong places for your help. You should be looking, somebody say, to God. Listen, this is why when I give the folk I don't even expect to receive it back. When you give to stuff and expect people, listen, don't give it. Because if you have an expectation on them, watch this, the Bible says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. That means he has unlimited resources. We give to people who don't have unlimited resources. Listen, I, I need to make this plain. Jackie can give to me today and I can have good intent to give it back. But all it takes is one issue in my life to ruin my finances. So when I give, I expect to receive back, not from me, but somebody say from God. Somebody say I'm looking in the wrong places. So, so this, this psalmist could lift up his head because he knew that his help was coming, somebody say from the Lord. Why is this significant? Because you can endure seasons of sacrifice when you know your help is on the way. The reason why folk can look at me and say, Keith, why do you keep helping them? Why do you keep giving to that? Why do you keep sacrificing and causing yourself to be tired? Because I know my help is on the way. Ooh, I can endure seasons when I know I'm weary. And it's like, I don't know if y'all ever ran track or did sports. You know, if you get to the finish line, watch this. There's, there's nourishment and refreshment on the way. So I know that I may not see the finish line in this race called, on this journey called life, but I know if I'm walking with God, somebody say, my help is on the way. So watch this. You've got a question if you're walking with God. Uh, your help is on the way. And this is one of the ways that the Lord remembers sacrificial women. He commands our help. Ooh, that's good news, y'all. Your help from weariness, and I need y'all to hear this. Here's a word of wisdom. Your help from weariness is always attached to a word. Woo. And when the Lord sends his word, somebody say, that seals it. Woo. 
I need a word. I need a word. Watch this. Oh, consider the, big, the beginning portion of verse number eight. Watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, then the word of the Lord came to him. This is um, speaking about Elijah. This help for this sacrificial woman, woman was sent by way of a word from the Lord. And like I said, whenever God sends his word, somebody say that seals it. Notice what the new translation version of Isaiah 55, 11 says. It is the same way with my word. I send it out and it will always produce fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Fruit always follows his word. So watch it. And I said this earlier. Don't help nobody if you ain't got a word from God. I'm not going to sow into no, no another thing if I ain't got a word from God. You might feel it in your belly. You might feel sorry for them. But if God ain't, somebody say, give me a scripture. I'm not worried about feeling sorry for you. Y'all know folk can create tears. Y'all stand with me? Your mama know how to create tears when they're in a bad spot. But I ain't going to give even to my mama if I don't have a word. See, y'all don't like that. Y'all don't like that. Grandma, I'm going I'm to help you out, Grandma, but I need a word. Because watch this. I want fruit to follow my sacrifice. Oh, somebody say, I need a word. I need a word. I ain't giving it to you. I know I got it. Listen, I got it, but you ain't got it. Until God give me a word. The good news is, watch this. The Lord sends your help by way of his word. Watch this. That means you don't have to grieve when you sacrifice. Ooh, you don't have to feel guilty when you sacrifice. And watch out, you don't have to give up when you sacrifice. And somebody say, as long as I got a word. Because where his word goes, so shall your help. Now that's good. This is why folk have given stuff to folk. And they feel, they feel remorse, they feel regret. Maybe you didn't have a word. And watch this, watch what the Bible says. Though it may tarry. I know it feels like it ain't on the way, but as long as I got a word, somebody say it's on the way. My help is on the way. Oh, he commands your help. He commands your help uh, because where his word goes, so shall your help. You don't have to worry if your sacrifice will be in vain when God sends his word. Our prayer must be when we sacrifice is God, send me a word. Somebody say, God, send me a word. So here this, the first thing I needed us to know, that the Lord remembers sacrifice, sacrificial women by commanding your help. Oh, that should help some woman that's been sacrificing. Now let's look at the next portion of the text. The Bible says, he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Ah, Y'all know how folk can ask you for stuff and you be like, I, I get it. It may not seem like a lot to you, but it's a lot to me. Y'all never had that? When folk ask you for $20, then I, that, that's a lot to me. I just paid my bills. This cup of water may have seemed like a little bit to you, but somebody said that was a lot for her. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for myself and my son that, I, that we may eat and die. Here's what I need us to know. I think one of the most difficult things for sacrificial people is that many times we believe our sacrifices go unseen. I, that, I think that's the most difficult thing when you can sacrifice for folk and it goes, somebody say unseen. unseen. What do I mean? You can cook when you're exhausted, but it seems like they're ungrateful. Yeah. Somebody say unseen. unseen. Watch this, because you know folk like to complain for the food, about the food. Yeah. Somebody say unseen. You ain't know my behind was tired. You can clean. Watch this when you have other expectations, but it seems like they do not care. My wife get on to me all the time because they mess up the house. Somebody say right away. And you can comfort others when yourself, you yourself are enduring. And it seems like they, they move on once they are comforted. Somebody say it goes unseen. Ah, you can sacrifice and folk act like Man, I ain't even sacrificed for you. But it's important to note that when your sacrifices seem unseen and benefit the ungrateful, it's easy to get upset. I don't know about y'all, but when your sacrifices go unseen and it's ungrateful folk, it can make you, somebody say, upset. upset. Yet the good news is, watch this, the Lord remembers us by confronting our hardship. 
So not only does he command our help, but he confronts our hardship. That's good news to me, y'all, that he confronts it. He confronts it. And as watch this, and God confronts us, watch this, our hardship, not to remind us of our, uh, our sacrifices, but to remind us that our sacrifices are seen by God. Listen, if nobody else sees what I do, I want to at least know that God sees me. I don't care if they don't acknowledge my name, but God, do you see me? And, and God says, if you sacrifice according to my word, somebody say, he sees me. Consider how the prophet confronts his widow in our foundational text. Notice what he says. He says, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But the thing to make note of this request by Elijah is that even though he may, the, the Bible never says that he has indication of her wealth or lack thereof, but he did know she was a widow. God told Elijah in verse number nine that she was a widow. And as I noted before, God commands care for widows and not widows to care for others. What am I trying to say? Elijah's request was less about her attention to his command and more to do with the Lord's awareness of her condition. Did y'all catch what I just said? It was not about Elijah making sure she had attention to his command. The Lord was trying to just make this woman aware that I'm aware of your condition. You don't think that God knew that she didn't have enough bread to feed Elijah? You don't think that God knew that she was going to prepare this morsel for her and her son to die? He, she, God just wanted her to know that I know your condition. And the good news is, watch this, that God knows our condition. Tell your neighbor, he knows my condition. The Lord remembers sacrificial women by reminding us, watch this, that he is mindful of our condition. Oh, that's good news, y'all. When nobody, and listen, for women, this is critical because you can sacrifice so much that nobody knows your condition. You can carry stuff so well that nobody knows you're going through. Have y'all ever seen a woman that was crying? This for the this for the girlfriends. You got your girlfriend that you were just crying on the phone with and she gets up and she picks her kids up from school, not knowing that she was going through. She puts herself together and you did not know she was going through. She wears it so well, but God says, I'm mindful of your condition. Woo. That's good news, y'all. Even when you can fake other folk, somebody say, God knows my condition. Notice what 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9a says. The Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord. Woo. This is good news. Run to and fro. You can go in your prayer closet and cry your eyes out, but God sees. Ah, it says it goes throughout the whole earth. I know you've been crying in your car. But somebody say, God sees. God sees. He's mindful of my condition. This means he confronts our hardship to remind us that he's mindful of our condition. This is going to help somebody. Even when the pastor that you think is so prophetic, that you think is so deep, that you think he just know all of my stuff, even when the pastor don't recognize him. Yeah. Somebody say, God does. God does. I ain't got to get mad at the pastor when the pastor don't see I'm going through because somebody say God does. God does. I, don't, I ain't got to get mad when Pastor Cole couldn't prophesy into my condition because somebody say God knows. God knows. Oh, that's good news to me, y'all. The good news is that when God is mindful of our condition, watch this, he always moves with compassion. Now that's good news because you know folk can be mindful of your condition and never move with compassion. The difference about God, he'll never leave you the way he found you. Oh, now that's good news to me. So even when your husband, y'all know that husbands can be sometimes detached from your emotions. So even when your husband does, husband does not move concerning your condition, somebody say God will. God will. Now that's good news to me. I don't know about y'all, but that's good news to me. And women, y'all know y'all can have bad days too. I'm not just beating up on the men. The men can walk in and be all kind of weary. You asking them to do all kind of stuff. Men know that God will move on your behalf. The Bible says he to give support to those whose heart is blameless towards him. Oh, that's good news. God does not simply see women that sacrifice. He promises to give you strength. Somebody say, I've got strength. Oh, he's going to give you strength. 
I don't know about anybody else, but when you become weary from sacrifices, watch this. Many times that unexpected text gives us strength to endure. You know, you can be going through and you get that unsolicited encouragement. It gives me strength to endure. Nobody knew that I was going through and that unrequested hug gives me strength to endure. And watch this. Everybody ain't trying to be in your business. Tell your neighbor, everybody ain't trying to be in your business. Because watch this, you could just get up from prayer and somebody gives you a call asking, how you doing? And really it's God trying to confront your hardship to remind you that he's mindful of my condition. That's good news to me, y'all. Somebody say he's mindful of my condition. God can extend compassion when using people to confront your hardship. And I said this, herein lies one of the reasons why the sacrifices of women have caused some to grow weary because you think the text, the encouragement, and the hug was to get in your business, but somebody say everybody ain't trying to get in my business. Y'all gotta know this, all right? Some of us think because we have um, prior relationships where folk slandered our name, this is why you got to make sure that you're in relationship with folk that God told you to be in relationship with. Y'all heard me? Somebody say, everybody ain't trying to be in my business. Maybe what God is trying to do is to let you know that he knows your burdens. And maybe the reason that you are bitter about your condition is because you failed someone that God sent to confront your hardships coming to your life. Listen. We shut folk off when folk ask us how we doing. Church folk know how to say, I'm blessed and highly favored, and you just got beat upside the head. Somebody say, just got beat up. And you tell me that you're blessed and highly favored. And God sent somebody in your life to let you know that he's mindful of your condition. And we're so prideful that we don't want nobody to know what we got going on. Listen, this is why I be on the pulpit telling y'all that Pastor Keith is weary. Because watch this, I need some folks, somebody say, to pray for me. Everybody ain't trying to be in your business. And watch this, even if they are, no weapon formed against you. Shout, Pastor, you can know my business, and baby, I want you to know it. Because watch this, one day God will lift my burdens. So sometimes don't get mad when folk that don't like you know all your business. As long as you're walking with God, remember, he's commanded my help. Somebody say, my help is on the way. Because you may see me like this today, but baby, wait till tomorrow. Somebody say, my help is on the way. Oh, y'all got it. Y'all got to let that pride go. Because Scott is trying to let you know he's mindful of your condition. And watch this. I love this text. Pastor Cole and I were at something yesterday, a men's symposium, and I, I brought this up. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 17, that a brother is born for adversity. Could it be that they called you because they were on assignment by God to confront your hardships? Wow. Listen, that means that every adversity that I go through in life, God says, I've sent somebody, somebody say this, on assignment to help me through my time of adversity. Somebody say, everybody ain't trying to get in my business. I hope y'all receive that on today. So because watch this, the Lord remembers sacrificial women by confronting our hardships. And I'm done, y'all. Let's look at the last portion of the text. The Bible says, and Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord of God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. I need us to understand this. Your level of faith is revealed by what you're willing to fight through. Your level of faith is revealed by what you're willing to fight through. And a lot of folk get, get weary and fall out of the race. And really, it's not that you don't have power to endure the journey. Somebody say, you ain't really got enough faith. You ain't really got enough faith. Because watch this. If you're called by God, the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So if God is ordering my steps, I know that he's going to be with me in every step. So when I face adversity, I've got to know that I've already been equipped and that God is with me. Watch this. Somebody say to endure. 
Watch this, and I said this before, many of y'all know how to find trouble better than trouble knows how to find you. That means you ain't walking with God. So if trouble finds me on the journey while I'm walking with God, somebody say, I'm good. But some of y'all just finding trouble. Somebody say, on your own. Yeah, that, that ain't the one that God gonna keep you through. And herein lies one of the reasons why some sacrifices of believers can be in vain. Because they never take hold of the faith that promised them victory. If I could just have this level of faith, somebody say, I'll receive the victory. Yet this is why many times God will use seasons of sacrifice and even seasons when we have little strength of sacrifice. Watch this, to challenge our hearts. He remembers us by challenging our heart. Somebody say, he challenges my heart. Somebody may be saying, what do I mean? Notice why Elijah admonishes this woman in our foundational text with these words. He says, after she says all that, you know, I ain't got, I ain't got no, I was just about to get you the water. Now you're asking for bread. You're asking for a little bit too much. And then Elijah says, but do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. You know, when I just told folk that I ain't really got it. Now you asking me to do what I intended to do, but do something else. I just told you I ain't got it. Elijah says, no, don't worry about this. In other words, the Lord wanted to try her heart so it could reveal how much she trusts him. Have you ever been in a place where God tells you to do something and you know in a natural, I ain't really got it. God, you're asking me to do something that I know I ain't really got. God, if I do it, I can put myself at the place of looking a fool. God says, no, do what you intended. And really what God, whenever God tells you to do something that you know you ain't really got, he's trying to see, he's trying to try your heart to find out how much you really trust him. That's good news to me, y'all, that God will say, I just want to know how much you really trust me. And if I can't trust you with this, you'll never get what I really have prepared for you. And the reason why a lot of the stuff is held up in our life, because somebody say, I don't really trust them. And if God, watch this, if you don't trust God, God won't trust you with his stuff. The reason why the dream, the prophecy ain't come to pass, because God can't trust you, somebody say, with his stuff. Y'all know how you done gave folk the stuff and you realize, no, nah, I can't trust you with my stuff. No, nah, I, 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 really, I, done, I done tried you once, but I ain't going to try you again because I can't trust you with my stuff. Somebody say God is the same way. See, y'all don't like that God the same way. Just like your behind when you done gave folk money and then they realized they said they were going to give back in two weeks and they ain't give back. And then you see them, somebody say at the club. I ain't saying you was at the club. I'm saying you saw them at the club. I, that right there let me know I can't trust you with my stuff. And God says, I can't trust you with my stuff. So the question we got to ask ourselves during season of sacrifice, sacrifice, how much do you trust him? Whenever you endeavor to sacrifice, somebody say you better trust him. Not, not, not what the fruit of your sacrifice looks like, but do you trust him? Not, not how much more sacrifice can you live with, but do you trust him? Not even the lies of the enemy concerning your sacrifice, but somebody say, do you trust him? Because watch this, it's your faith in him that will determine the fruit of your sacrifice. Listen, it's not even, ooh, y'all got to catch this. It's not even dependent upon the character of the person that you sacrifice for. It's, it's not even dependent upon the integrity of the person that I sacrifice for. Because y'all know my kids don't know no better. Y'all heard what I just said? My kids are three and four. I can give them a toy today, they'll break it tomorrow and ask for a toy the next minute. Somebody say a new toy. So it's not dependent upon their, their character, their integrity, it's how much faith do I have in God that will determine the fruit that I receive from my sacrifice. And the reason that many of y'all ain't seeing no fruit from your sacrifice is somebody say you ain't got no faith. Tell your neighbor you ain't got no faith. See, y'all do not like that. Y'all don't like that. Y'all thought it was dependent upon them. Now, somebody say, it's dependent upon my faith. 
Watch this. I'm going to give you Bible. I never like to say anything that ain't in the book. The Bible says this in Psalm 22, 5. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. When I can put my trust in God, I know that folks say I shouldn't be in a house right now. I shouldn't be buying a house in this economy, but I put my trust in God. And watch this. He sent me a word, and I won't be ashamed. I know folks said, no, don't marry that one. Do you know their background? Do you, do you know their family and the people that they come from? But God sent me a word, and I won't be ashamed. I know they told me not to start this business, but I know I got a word from God, and my trust is in him. And watch this. Somebody say, I will not be ashamed. Somebody tell, you, tell yourself you will not be ashamed. Because here's what the enemy does. The enemy will cause you not to sacrifice when God told you to do because you believe that you're going to fall right on your face. The reason why many of y'all ain't start the business is because you feel like you're going to fall on your face. You, the reason why you have not get, gotten married yet and you won't commit to that man or that woman because you feel like you're not going to be committed enough and you're going to fall on your face. But somebody say, I put my trust in God. And you will not be ashamed. It's folk that told me don't start this church until you got $75,000 in the bank. And tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor that Pastor Keith is not ashamed. Not ashamed. And I fall on my face. Because I, I got a word from God. And watch this. I put my trust in him. Matter of fact, pastors, one pastor told me this. The only, if you want to be successful, teach your people how to tithe. Teach your people to give 10%. Teach your people to give first fruits. Tell your neighbor the devil is a lie. I never taught on that. I never tell people to give when they can't even pay their own bills. And pe man, watch this. God blessed us with a building. And watch this. More folk paying more for commercial property than we paying in our rent. Somebody say, because I trusted in God. If you put your trust in God, your sacrifices will never put you to shame. You can continue to sacrifice. Watch this for that ungrateful child. I don't know if I got that on the next screen. What's on the next screen? Stay right there. Listen, you can sacrifice for that ungrateful child, not because of them, but because of your faith in God. Did y'all hear what I just said? You're going to have some kids that's not going to listen to you. You're going to have some kids that you're going to have to bail out. But if God told you to do it, somebody say do it. And you not because of them, but because of your faith in God. You can, watch this, you can continue to sacrifice for that unstable parent, not because of them, but because of your faith in God. Watch this. I know we got some daddies. I ain't talking about mine. I might be. That's raggedy. Watch this, but I can be faithful. Watch this, and it, they may be unstable, but I put my faith in God. Somebody say, so I will not be ashamed. See, y'all don't like that. I'm trying to help y'all today. Somebody say today. Yeah. And watch this. Uh, y'all really ain't going to like this one. You can continue to sacrifice for that ungodly spouse. Not because of them, but because of your faith in God. The Bible says that the sanctified wife, the, 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 the saved wife, will sanctify the unbelieving husband. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, the saved husband will sanctify the unbelieving wife. I'm not sacrificing because of them, but because somebody say my faith in God. I believe his word. Even when they're ungrateful. Even when they're unstable. Watch this. Even when they're ungodly. Somebody say I put my faith in God. The reason, if you ever want to see fruit from your sacrifice, somebody say I got to have faith. Because when we're weary from sacrifices, we have to be faithful to his word. And this is why as Elijah admonished his widow to not fear, but to do as the Lord instructed, we must do likewise. Even when you sacrifice to the point that it hurts, somebody say, as long as I got a word. I need to say this because I need to say this good. I don't know who watching. You might go to somebody else's church. When folk tell you to give until it hurt, somebody say the devil is a lie. Unless God told me. Somebody say, unless God told me. I don't care if it came from the pulpit to the bishop to the, the, to the pope. I don't care. Somebody say, God better tell me. I hope that's going to help somebody. Keep some money in your pocket. Go shopping with your money unless God tell you to give your money. 
We've got churches that do that. And they tell us we'll see fruit. But I cannot put faith in man. My faith has to be, somebody say, in God. Put your faith in God. So I'm done, y'all. The reality is that the weight of women that women have to carry can cause them to become weary. I know that. I live with a woman, y'all. I've been birthed by women. I've been raised by women. This weight that women carry can cause them to become weary. Because sacrifice washes can drain us of our strength. And if we can be honest, if it was not for the sacrifice of women, many of us would not be here. Therefore, we must be mindful of sacrificial women. But even greater, I can be mindful of my grandmother. I can be mindful of my wife. But the good news is that women who sacrifice, regardless if folk ain't mindful of you, somebody say, God remembers me. Ooh, that's good news, y'all, that God, that God remembers me. And as it was with this widow in our text, so it is for other women that sacrifice. The Lord commands your help. The Lord confronts your hardship. And the Lord challenges your heart. But watch this. Beyond not only does the Lord remember sacrificial women, here's the good news. Somebody say, he rewards us. Every woman in this place, somebody say, he rewards me. I need us to see something in the text. The Bible says in verse number 15, she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household, ooh, now that's good news. Do, do y'all see what happened in the text? It says she and Elijah, and somebody say her household. Now, I love that. It didn't say her and her son. Somebody say the household. So I guess it was other folk in the house as well. The Bible says then the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. This means the Lord promises sacrificial women, watch this, a continual harvest. That God says that your well will never run dry. I know the enemy wants you to give up, but somebody say, my well will never run dry. If I sacrifice according to the word of the Lord, he says my well will never run dry. And watch this. Here's the good news for me. When folk didn't see you eat in other seasons, they're going to have to eat off you. Right. Hear what I just said? When folk saw you when you didn't have enough, I'm going to have to get enough. Somebody say for me. God says your well will never run dry. I hope I encourage some woman today that your well will never run dry. Hear this. I want every woman in this building to stand, but I want to do something um, for every woman that is 60 plus. Hey, Pastor Cole, I think I got a oil, uh, my oil in the, in the office. I want every woman that is 60 plus just to come to this altar. 60 plus, come to this altar. I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for all the women, but I want to pray for these women. Somebody say they've carried weight. Somebody say they carried weight and they've carried it well. Hey, stretch your arms of faith to these women. Father, we thank you. We honor you, God, for the sacrifice of all women in this place, but most importantly for these women standing at this altar. God, many of us would not be here if it was not for them. And God, I thank you, God, for this reminder this morning, God, that you're mindful of them. God, I pray, God, for Miss Bonita, God. Cause her to know, God, that you're mindful of her, God. Cause her to know, God, that you know every, her every condition, God. Her every cry, her every plea, God. Cause her to know that, God, we pray, God. God, every woman on this altar, God, we thank you for them. We thank you for them, God. And God, wherever they may find themselves, God. God, that although their help may not be here now, cause them to know God that their help is on the way God you will never leave them nor forsake them matter of fact God you said even when their mother and their father forsake them God that you would be there be there for these women God we pray and God I pray God that you bless them abundantly father your word declares God and I speak this over their lives that I have not seen ear has not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men that which you prepared for them and the reason why, God, you've got that kind of stuff prepared for them is because they love you. God, we've witnessed their sacrifice. God, even when we were blind to the burdens they were carrying, God, God, you saw them. And God, when you see their condition, you move with compassion. So God, I pray over every one of their lives a continual harvest. 
a continual harvest. Let their well never run dry. God, many of us have benefited from these women. Let their well never run dry. God calls folk, God, that may have slandered their name to eat from their table. Woo. Let their well never run dry. Let their well never run dry. Encourage her heart, God, we pray. Cause her to know, God, that her well will never run dry. God, thank you, God, for your woman's servant, for her sacrifice. And it's in Jesus' name. Every believer in this place said, thank God.